Hi, it's Trab again, and in this video I'll show you my lighting and rendering technique for the Iron Baby. I'll show you how I lighted this particular shot, where the light is coming from the sky and from some fires. I will also show you in this shot how I had to use a camera projection technique, because for the background of this one I only had a still frame, but afterward we thought about making a camera move where the camera would be coming forward to get a close-up on the character. So I had to create some geometry on which I mapped my background and I also had to add some cars where I mapped the fire footage on them. Here you can see my light setup. I used some V-ray light which are some kind of area lights. I also used the reflection map, an HDR image that I put in the here in the V-Race render setup. I didn't put it in the GI environment slot, I put it only in the reflection environment slot because I'm not using GI. Here you can see my reflection map that I created with my fisheye lens. You can see it's really a 360 degree map supplying reflection from every direction. And I used this map in the reflection slot, and I, but I also used it directly inside of my light with a circular file off around it to simulate the light from the sun. You can see the circular file off here. Inside of it, there's the reflection map and my gradient circular file of here. So that's the, what I get and that's what I use to simulate the light coming from the sun. This way with the circular gradient I can have more control on my highlights. Those one here are standard light that I use only as fill light just to add some luminosity on the other side. And then I also use some V-ray light material for my fire, so the fire is really emitting light based on the fire footage and it's creating nice dancing highlights on the character. Here you can see I was using an occlusion pass to also add some more realism to my lighting. And let me talk to you about what I was not using. I didn't use indirect illumination or JI because I didn't need in any of my scene the color to spill from an object to another. I didn't use neither IBL or image based lighting because it's really too long. Sometimes I will render only one frame with JI and IBL to get some kind of reference but then I can reproduce the lighting with some standard light, very light, an iRes HDR image for the reflection and it will render like 10 times faster for the exact same visual result. Here you can see the camera projection that I did for my camera move. If you look from some angle it looks like a bunch of polygon all stretched up everywhere but if we look from the camera view it will look correct. For positioning my polygon I started with a plane facing the camera and then I used the camera as a pivot to scale my vertices away from the camera. In that way I could not deform my background from the camera point of view because I'm stretching the polygon only from the camera. So in that way it was only creating depth when I was moving away the vertices. Lastly, let me talk to you about linear workflow, which I'll always use for all my renderings to get a lot more quality and to get a lot more range to play in the compositing phase. For someone who's not familiar with linear workflow, let's say it's a bit like when you start using the raw format with a digital camera in 10 bits or 12 bits. The raw format allows you to make many more manipulations on your photo in the computer, like you can change the exposure, which is impossible with a low-range format like JPEG. If you're rendering in linear workflow, you can play more in compositing and get a more photographic result. To get linear workflow, 
I had to set up Gamma in 3ds Max and Color Mapping in V-Ray. I also need to use the .exr format in 16-bit float, and then I also have to set up my project setting in After Effects for 32-bit float and linear compositing. I don't render in 32-bit float because the files will get two times bigger and they will still look exactly the same. The only case you can need 32-bit float is for ZDEP pass or maybe motion vector pass where you can need the extra depth but personally I don't use motion vector pass because I do all my motion blur in compositing with a real smart motion blur. And now to convince you better to use linear workflow I'll show you a little example that really shows the difference. Here if I render in float or non-float I will get the exact same result. But if I add motion blur and glow, it will be really different. This is the nonlinear one, and this is the linear one. You can notice right away that the highlights are really more intense in the linear one, and the way the motion blur is acting is also more photographic. If you look at a photograph and try to reproduce exactly the same motion blur, you will need to use linear workflow. Also in the non-linear one, you can see I lose all the color I had in my glow. So that was all for lighting and rendering. In the next video, I'll talk to you a bit about the rigging.